Hi everybody, welcome to Sprague Wood Turning. My name is Jim. If you haven't been here before, this is predominantly a turning channel. Reaching every week I teach people how to make things on the lathe. I do do some flat work on occasion, but usually if it doesn't go around, I don't like doing it. This week we're going to be working with some more fantastic box elder burl. Uh, this is a really great example of box elder burl. Really starting to get low on this stuff. Lots of red in this piece. And of course, lots of really cool spikes on the top. So we are going to make a lamp. This is going to be the lamp base. It's going to be a two part uh, video. I'll make the lamp base uh, this, this video and then we'll do the lamp shade the next video. And um, But what I want to do with this is stabilize this and uh, basically get it ready uh, for the next step. So let's head on over to the casting bench, figure out what we're going to use for a bucket to cast this in. And um, I want to stabilize this too. So uh, lots to cover in this video. Hopefully you enjoy it. So the plan with this piece is I want to stabilize it. And the main reason for that is because I want this to be I don't want any air coming out of this where we're going to get bubbles. So that's that's the first thing. The other thing too is this is quite tall and as you can see <laughs> a lot of it is missing here. So this is nine inches roughly. So I want to take a couple inches off the bottom of this. That'll take us up to about here and we'll be able to make something with this. And it should give me a wider bottom to place on the bandsaw bed so that we can spin this and, and cut it safely. Uh, so we're going to stabilize this. Uh, I just want to, I don't see the point in stabilizing the whole thing if you're going to cut it up and, you know, not use it. So I, I do have a template. Throw this on the top. And this is the template that fits the bucket here. And then at least we're only stabilizing what we're going to use for the project. Let's head over to the bandsaw. So when I first looked at this piece, I wasn't real comfortable with how a big portion of it was missing on the bottom. And uh, yeah, that gives you an idea of another reason to stabilize it because it's just full of these tiny little voids. Very cool looking burl, but uh, can be challenging to work with because this sat around for a number of years and it's actually got a fair bit of dry rot in it. So that's another reason to stabilize this, but it's got some really, really beautiful color in it. And the red that you're seeing in there occurs naturally. It's not, it's not something that's, you know, the tree's not infected. <laughs> so uh, by the way, once we get this trimmed up, we'll end up having to trim this again later on. Uh, I personally found that the, the size of this piece was just a little bit too bulky. So... I'll end up trimming this a little bit later on, but uh, cleaning it off with the brass coated brush here is important just to clean the surface up and to get rid of any floaty bits that might be in the resin later on. All right, so as far as stabilizing is concerned, I'm going to use this deeper bucket. Hopefully we don't have as much foaming. I'm going to put it in upside down like this, and the reason for that is I'm going to be throwing marbles in here to displace the resin and to weight this down so it doesn't float. So I'm worried about marbles getting jammed down inside of there. I know that we could probably get them out, but the thing is, this wood may swell and then the marbles will be trapped inside of it. And that is not any good at all. That should do it. Hopefully. This week we're going to be using Cactus Juice Stabilizing Resin. I do believe this is probably the most popular stabilizing resin on the market. Might be wrong on that, but I see a lot of people using it. Here we go. That's about 29 inches of vacuum. Or that's what the gauge says anyway. You can already see where the resin has dropped off. The marbles are exposed already. Yeah. 
What a difference releasing that vacuum just once and look, there's hardly any bubbles like there was before and we're at almost 30 inches of vacuum according to the gauge. Huge difference. Full vacuum now. So anyway, I've just, I've turned the pump off. I'm gonna leave this for, for about 10 minutes or so, and then I'll start the pump up and I'll start doing, you know, cycling the pump on and off. And um, the goal here is to not get any bubbles. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Anyway, I'll keep you updated as we go. Well, as you can see, we're still bubbling away here. Um, this is three hours now. So, you know, I'm going to call it good enough there. What I'm going to do is release the release the vacuum and let this sit overnight. And then we can heat cure this in the oven tomorrow. There, that's quite a noticeable drop in the marbles and the level, I should say. It's very important at this stage that the wood stays submerged in the resin. So we're going to leave this overnight as it is. See you guys tomorrow. Well, all right, it's been 20 hours since I uh, released the vacuum. Now, if you remember, when we first started, the resin was sitting on top of these marbles. Uh, I'm hoping that the casting is still covered in, um, in uh, <laughs> stabilizing resin or else I may have to dump some more in and let it sit a little bit longer. But anyway, let's move some marbles out of the way. I want to get some gloves on. See that? Well, okay, I'm going to dump a little bit more in there and I'll let it sit for, I don't know, a little bit, probably a couple hours and then we'll get to uh, cooking this up. Yeah, see the bubbles? Actually, what I think I might do is pull another vacuum on it and uh, we'll see where we're at after that. And kind of a funny story, the reason why my stabilizing resin is in this is because I dropped the bucket or dropped the gallon container and it exploded. Well, the top would come off. I was able to salvage this and a small little bit from yesterday. So, uh, yeah, that wasn't a fun day. It was a lot of cleanup too. That's full vacuum there, or as much as I can pull anyway. There, we'll just let that drip for about 15 minutes and then we'll start baking. All right, I'm not gonna be able to use the rack because I'm not gonna be able to fit this in there if I do. But I do want to elevate it up off of this so it doesn't get stuck to this. Give me a second. All right, so the instructions for this, if you haven't seen this before, is two to three hours at 200 Fahrenheit. That's 93 degrees Celsius. I don't trust this, so I'm going to set it at 225 and 225. We only do an hour at a time. Uh, I expect this to <laughs> roll a lot of smoke, so uh, I'll bring it back when it starts to cure up here. I am going to have to open both doors because uh, we'll just smoke out of here if I don't. Anyway, I'll keep you up to date. All right, that's 20 minutes into it. Starting to see a fair bit of smoke. Not too bad yet, though. All right, this is 40 minutes into it. Whew. 
Don't see any uh, fluid accumulating on the tray yet. Bring it back a little later on. Hour and a half into it, we're still rolling coal. You can see all the dried material down there. Uh, yeah, halfway there. So that's what the stabilizing resin looks like when it's fully cured. Uh, it is important that you cure, fully cure the stabilizing resin. If you don't, you're going to have nothing but issues later on down the road. So this was in there for three hours and it's fully cured. Just like the coral bowl that I did a while back, these are the same colors. Uh, I really like the way that that looked. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Pearl red, pearl white, ocean blue, pearl wine red, neon pink, glitter purple, emerald green, galaxy purple, aqua blue, and midnight purple. Now, these, the glow in the darks, these, these are glow in the darks. And I'm going to mix them really, really intensely so that, you know, if it does get some UV light on the top of it, then it should glow. So we're going to use, of course, some UV resin to do this. And I'm just going to mix it up in these Dixie cups. And I've got some cheap old dollar store, dollar tree brushes to do the painting with. All right, let's do it. So as you watch me mix these up, I'm, I'm just going to briefly talk about the stabilizing again. I know that we covered this just recently. Uh, the practice in the past was to wrap these pieces in tin foil. And the problem with that, if I had done that, the that cured stabilizing resin would have been all through the spikes on the top of this thing. And, and it just would have made it a mess. So that's why I don't use any, I don't wrap any of my stuff anymore when I cast or sorry when I stabilize it uh, and um, the stabilizing is really just meant to harden up that punky wood and to make it a good solid piece I didn't weigh this piece I probably should have but in the end this is a really heavy beefy blank so and that's exactly what we want all right I've got all of the <laughs> all of the different colored resins here on the side along with their corresponding container. That way I know what, a, what I'm looking at here. Uh, just like in the previous video, I'm gonna leave the glow in the darks last. I want them sitting on the very top. So, you know, <laughs> I'm just gonna grab a stool here. And, uh, well, it's, it's painting time with Jim, <laughs> is what this is. Now, We've got quite a dark, deep, not dark, well, it is kind of dark. We've got a deep crevice here. And I definitely want to do my best to try and fill this in, but I'm very, very, very concerned about it curing the UV light, getting down on there to cure this. But with it sitting on there, I think that it's going to be okay. So I'm maybe not going to go all the way into it, but I'm going to go as far as I think that I can get away with curing it is concerned. Uh, I didn't see during my research on the first one, uh, the one color that wasn't real prominent was white, but some reefs, it did, it was quite prominent. So I don't know if there's any right or wrong way to do this. Uh, I'm just going to lay it on here in spots and just try and fill it in and let it flow over the edge and we'll see what we get. And the other thing that I'm not concerned about is changing my brush out and for each one of these colors because, well, it just really doesn't matter. I think one of the keys to doing this is to, of course, try and put this on randomly, but, you know, that's a lot harder than you may think it is. And, you know, we're just... As human beings, I don't think we're we're wired that way. We need we want uniformity and um, we want total randomness here. There, that's the Christmas reef. And yes, I know at home there's probably a large group of people 
yelling at your TV screens right now. <laughs> what are you doing? You're destroying that thing. Well, you know, I kind of thought that the first time I did this, but uh, you know, in the end, I thought it was a really cool project, uh, really cool bowl that we made. And, and uh, but yeah, when I was first putting it on, that very first time, I was like, man, this looks, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how this is all going to pan out. But uh, anyway, it is, uh, it's pretty neat. Hopefully it's neat anyway. Hopefully I don't screw this one up. On this piece, I think the only thing that I would change is I would try and get more glow in the dark and more UV resin period down inside that crevice as I didn't have I didn't have any issues curing it so I wish I had to put more down inside the crevice all right this is the glow in the dark since this resin is cured with UV light of course it's always a consideration when it's when the pigment is mixed strong in pieces like this that you know could be tough to cure so keep that in mind if you if you're going to do something like this uh, because it can really ruin your project if you don't cure it properly. The one thing that really makes this look cool is how it kind of flows around the spikes and it's all kind of combining and that's pretty much exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, so uh, I think that's it. Um, we've, uh, <laughs> we've made enough mess. Yeah, I might do, there's some, there's some little holes here on the side too. So I'm going to cure this first and then we'll probably do something about them. Maybe on the bottom here too. Anyway, uh, the way that we're going to use, the way that we're going to cure this is with the UV lights. All right, let's see what we got. Oh yeah. Awesome, awesome. All right, I'm going to leave these lights on here for 10 minutes. I might even leave it on longer than that. And I will, oh yeah, look at that, so cool. And I will bring these back when we're ready to do the next step. Okay, so I've got my circle cutting jig on and the bandsaw now. You know, I just was looking at the piece after the UV resin was geared, and I'm like, okay, this is this is just too too big. So... You know, instead of casting this and whittling away all the burl and the resin that I was going to cast it with, it just didn't make any sense not to cut it down and, and proceed in that direction. So that's what I'm doing here on the bandsaw. Uh, <laughs> it's important that if you're going to tilt your bandsaw that you tilt it the right way and not the wrong way. Let's mix up some resin. This week we're gonna be using deep casting epoxy from designer epoxy. I didn't want to tint this very strongly because of course I want the UV light to penetrate it so that of course it can glow after it gets to its final destination. And of course we're gonna use some Caribbean blue because that's what I used in the, the coral bowl the last time I did one of these. It's a beautiful color too, love it. All right, so before we pour the epoxy, I was just thinking, you know, this thing shouldn't float. It's, you know, stabilized, it's quite heavy. But if it does float, I'll have no way to secure it to the bottom after I've dumped the resin in or the epoxy in. So what I'm gonna do is err on the side of caution. I'm gonna glue this in the bottom of this. And then that way, hopefully, this won't lift out of here when we put the epoxy in. There, we'll give that a couple of minutes to harden up and then we'll pour the, pour the epoxy. All right, uh, this is a liter and a half. Hoping this will do it, but uh, you never know. Yeah, that's not enough for me. It's so important that that blue tinted epoxy that I just put in there stays well above the uh, the burl below. So I'm going to have to mix up a little bit more very back. 
All right, so here's the other 600 milliliters. It's weird, it looked like that was moving. <laughs> There, we should be good to go from there. And then that way we've got our ocean sitting on top of the coral. I'm gonna throw this in the pressure pot and we will see you guys in 72 hours. If I could do this without spilling it. Okay, so I just come out here to get the casting out of the pressure pot. And by the way, there are my two pressure pots. There and there. Here's the lid for that one. Uh, but it's welded to the bottom. I don't know where that leaked from, but I think we're gonna have to throw that bucket away because it's got a leak in it somewhere. Now I gotta try and get this out of here. All right, let's try this first. The resin still looks to be a little, uh, a little pliable. I'm a little bit early. Um, hmm. This isn't the first, by the way. There it is. Where did you leak from? Well, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to give this another day because it is not hard enough. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> I think that's going to look pretty cool. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, let's see where this leaked. I have no idea. Hmm. I don't know. Let's see if we can get this out. It's good. Initially I thought maybe it had lifted when I put it in. It's kind of an optical illusion. I would say that that looks like water. The only issue that I've got with this piece is it's kind of an odd size I find for a lamp. I always think of a lamp as being maybe a wide base and then thinner and then maybe a little wider at the top and we can certainly maybe do something like that here but um, good solid casting no thermal cracking didn't expect there would be anyway cool first thing that I'm going to do though is I'm going to stick a glue block on the very top of this because I don't want the live center going in and damaging what's going to be our ocean. And I'll drill a small hole here so that we can get that center. So that's just some 80 grit, just roughing up the surface so that the hot melt glue has a, has a good bonding surface. And the other thing too is, it's going to be awful hard to just stick this on here and eyeball it, so that's why I just put that round circle on there as a reference. So that's why I did that, in case people are wondering. Starting off with 750 RPM. And again, you know, don't get caught up in RPM. Piece like this, what I did was after I get it mounted between centers, I turned the lathe on and turned it up to it vibrate it and turned back it off. And then that just happened to be 750 RPM. I, I don't go over a thousand on this piece. I don't really see the need to. Uh, 1200 for me would be about the max on a piece this size. So all we're going to do is use the number three Hercules here from Hunter Tool Systems. And we're going to strip off the rest of this excess resin, get a good look at this thing, and then we'll figure out exactly uh, <laughs> where to go from here. Uh, I, I am always kind of concerned about using different brand of resins. Um, I wish that Designer Epoxy would come out with a stabilizing resin. That way we know for sure that things are going to be compatible. But I know, I know that typically when you're talking finishes, I, if I'm doing a, an epoxy coat, I don't want to put a sanding sealer underneath of it or anything like that. I want 
I want that epoxy coat to stick to the wood and you know of course a lot of times the issues with with doing epoxy coats is air leaching out of the wood and then causing bubbles in your in your epoxy coat so and I know that it's a common practice to seal the wood prior to putting an epoxy coat finish on but I'm always worried if things are compatible with each, with each other and this is very this is a very big problem when it comes to finishes because some finishes you can put over top of others and some you can't love leaving those real-time clips in uh, by the way the volume is only at 20 percent on that so it gives you an idea of actually how noisy it is uh, to turn a piece like this the um, that gives you a, a better size reference I know a lot of times when something's on the lathe it's hard to tell like in a photo actually how big something is so you know <laughs> I just kind of looked at that earlier and I was like man this thing is just too wide for me like it's it's just not going to work so that's kind of why i trimmed it down a little bit further and of course being covered with string shavings is all part of the fun of working with epoxy and resins if you like a clean workshop wood turning is not for you <laughs> I'll, th I'll throw that out there yeah you can put up curtains to kind of contain things but i don't know i don't like being closed in and stuff like that and i'm not claustrophobic by any stretch of the imagination but uh anyway it's just it's just one of those things if you want to work with with epoxy or resins then this is what you're going to deal with so getting that glue block ready to be mounted in the chuck and now we're a lot more secure than we were before mount it between centers is perfectly fine uh, I've got a lot of tension on this piece and I'm pretty confident it's never going to go anywhere. But the sooner you got it mounted in the chuck, the safer it's going to be. So we're going to clean off the very bottom of this and then get a glue block on the bottom. And then we'll be able to reverse this and then work on the upper part because, of course, that's the, that's the most important part of this piece is the upper part. And, of course, that's beautiful burl. So I'm just roughing this up with some 60 grit and then we'll get our glue block on. And then once that's set, we'll be able to trim it up and then reverse it again. So for those who are relatively new to my channel, that is the 5 8 Bowl Gouge by David Ellsworth, which for the most part, for the majority of my turning career, was my go-to tool as far as working with straight up wood pieces. And if I am just working on a straight wood piece, I will always go back to the gouge because that is you know it, that's the thing that i'm really comfortable with uh anyway the number three hercules was suggested to me by comments because you know i was having some issue turning hard burl and, and resin i was using another carbide tool manufacturer at that time too and was kind of struggling with it so anyway uh, I, I can't even remember who suggested it but i ended up you know getting the number three hercules and just you know it's a fantastic tool absolutely love it uh, you'll see it probably in the majority of my work now. Uh, resin and burl wood type work. Uh, anyway, Mike's a great guy. Check out Hunter Tools. Well, alrighty, it's uh, decision time. And what I think I'm going to do is just kind of round this off a bit. I might leave a little foot like this in the bottom, possibly, for the cord to come out of and uh, I'm going to sweep in. I mean, keep in mind that this is the feature that we really want to show off. So, you know, I'm going to sweep in a bit and flare out. I'm not sure, maybe just round this over. And uh, we'll get our hole drilled in. I think I might go with uh, another uh, art cast coat or a Pro Series coat. But look at that burl. <laughs> just crazy so much of the red fungus in it absolutely awesome and this 
This red that you see, that occurs naturally in the tree and it typically goes to stressed areas, which burls are. And of course, this being box elder burl, I mean, this is a very, very good example of it. But I mean, it is absolutely solidified and totally stabilized, so I'm really happy about that. Unfortunately, looks like we're gonna lose this, but you know, you gotta give this thing some style, so you gotta make some sacrifices in some areas. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think about this. Uh, I mean, as far as box elder burl goes, and the red that you see in this, that's, that's a lot. Sometimes you'll see them a little stronger than this, but usually not like that. So as you watch me whittle this piece down, I'll just briefly talk about last week's project. And of course, you know, that was uh, that was kind of a space themed project, a galaxy far, far away. Uh, absolutely fantastic. A lot of a lot of people really like this piece. Uh, anyway, I will link that at the end of this video if you've missed it. I know that a lot of times. Uh, for whatever reason, YouTube is not suggesting people are, I know that they're unsubscribing people for whatever reason, taking bell notifications off. It's, 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 I don't know. I don't, I don't understand why they're doing this. Um, anyway, it's just at times it's quite frustrating to get emails and, and, you know, I see it in the comments where, you know, all oh, YouTube unsubscribed me again. And I, I, I'm just a little baffled by it. I, I don't understand it. So any of you YouTube experts that are listening, uh, can you shed some light on that? <laughs> but anyway, I will link that video at the end of this one in case you missed it. And uh, yes, we will be doing a, a little mini series of them. Maybe the next one's going to be a platter or a shallow bowl type affair with some box of burl, by the way. This is the first lamp that I've ever made. I've made a couple of night lights here on, on the channel, but uh, this is the first lamp that I've ever made. <laughs> so this is all, it's all new to me, but I mean, it's not very, I don't see it as being overly compl complicated. Uh, probably the hardest thing is coming up with a with a good looking design. I, when I After I did the coral bowl, I envisioned a lamp where those two natural edges with the spikes would be pointing towards each other and then of course you would do the uv uh, resin on both sides of those and then say leave a two inch gap between them and um, cast it and i was just like you know i thought that it would be too dark to do that and to be honest with you i didn't have the pieces to make that happen but you know that was i thought almost make it look like a cave or a portal if you will uh, but I just didn't have the pieces to do it and I was a little worried that I wouldn't be able to light it and it really would get lost in the piece. Pretty sure I talked about this last week. Sometimes it's best to take the piece that you're working on off the lathe and set, especially if it's going to be orientated in this direction. Uh, I don't mind that, but it still is kind of a little clunky and heavy for me. But uh, I definitely want to cut this down a little bit and mostly the reason for that is so that we're going to see the uh, the glow-in-the-dark resins on the top here but uh, yeah this this is a little too beefy for my liking and same thing with that cove but other than that I kind of really like the way that sits but I don't know I'll have to give a little more thought but uh, Always best to take your pieces off the lathe like this if you're struggling with design and have a look at them when they're either horizontal or vertical. Whatever orientation that they're going to be used in. So one of the things that I didn't show on here due to the length of this video was the fact that on the side where the UV resin meets the wood, if there was, say, a little gully, if you will, 
the UV light didn't fully penetrate that and solidify it. So there was only about three or four spots on this piece on the side where I had to reuse the, the UV lights on the side just to cure that resin up. And, you know, again, I left it there for 10, 15 minutes and I never had any issues afterwards. But I do know that curing that UV resin when it's heavily tinted like it is and deep like it is can be a problem. So just watch out for that. And uh, anyway, we're just going to whittle this down, like I said earlier, uh, just to give some more clarity. I don't know if you've noticed, but, you know, I'm, I'll stop and have a look at things. And I may put my hand on the form and try and if I cut this away, what's this going to look like? You know, just just because, like I said last week, when it comes off, it's off. <laughs> You're still on the top here. You might be able to recast it, but anything down below that in the wood itself, it's gone. It's gone forever. So it's important to take your time when you're working on pieces like this, just to make sure that you, you know, get the, get the best piece from the, the casting that you have. It would be a, this, to be honest with you, this is probably some of the best box or bro that I've ever seen anywhere. So, you know, I'm really trying to do it justice and I'm also trying to do the form justice as well. And, Sometimes it's, it, you know, it's, it's a bit of a battle to, to see who's going to win because sometimes you have to change things and, you know, you just hope that when you do change them that you change them for the good and not for the worse. Just using a thin parting tool and then we'll be able to take some very light cuts on the top of this and move on to sanding soon. So you've got a lot of unsupported weight there, so very, very light cuts here so that you don't rip it from the jaws of the chuck. So that would not be good, not at this stage. So these are the three and a half inch stipple discs from sandpaper.ca. And again, just like all of my other sponsors, there is a link in the description to get 10% off your order or more if you use code inlaygym. All the links are down in the description, so uh, check them out. Uh, and I would not endorse a product here on my channel unless I wholeheartedly believe in it. I'm not that type of guy. And uh, for instance, sandpaper.ca, I've probably been using them for easily 15 years. So, you know, I was using them before coming to YouTube. I did see some small little areas that just, if I'm going to use an epoxy coat, I want to fill those in. So uh, that's what that was. And this piece was sanded to 180 after that. Okay, what I have here is three ounces of the Pro Series. I really like using this, and the Pro Series is meant for floors, so that means it's really hard. So it's a good, durable finish if you want it to finish it out in this. But you know, I really, there's tons of tiny, tiny little cracks, and so I think that this is the ideal thing to use before we go to any other finish. And this is a silicone barbecue brush, by the way. I keep getting asked, why do I prefer the Pro Series over Artcast? And don't get me wrong, Artcast would be absolutely perfect here as well. I like using the Pro Series because it's thinner and it flows better. Uh, it is, as you can see, it's kind of a little hazy. And that's by design because it's meant to be used uh, with colors for doing floors. But when it's applied thinly like here, it's not going to matter. Well, there's your coral reef. Hopefully it's, <laughs> hopefully it looks like a coral reef. That burl is just, oh man, it's crazy. Little cave on the side. Just beautiful. That burl is just absolutely beautiful. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think about this. And we'll see you tomorrow for, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. This looks pretty good. If it doesn't sag too much, that could be it. Or another one. See you tomorrow anyway.
Well, it is next day. Good morning, by the way. Uh, this is what we're looking at the next day. Just a couple of bubbles here. Nothing major at all. That's probably the biggest one there. I don't even know if the camera's going to see it. Uh, but anyway, after, after I got done yesterday, I took some photos of this and was looking at it last night. And the whole reason why we're doing this is so that we can see this. See the you know the coral beneath the ocean here and it's not real visible so this this to me is too thick and I think what I'm going to do is cut this down I'm definitely take down there's probably about I don't know three eighths of an inch we'll take that down and kind of round, round it over and I think we'll call it good from there and then hopefully uh, this will be more visible when we're looking at it you can see it okay on the side here and uh but anyway i don't know i really like this profile but i think that we just need to expose more of the coral beneath the ocean yeah it's funny sometimes i'll well most times i'll share a photo with my wife and and you know she i don't think that she was a big fan initially of this style at all <laughs> to, be, to be quite honest with you uh i actually like it but uh i don't think she's a huge fan of it i think it's it's grown on her as, as she's seen it progress but yeah definitely the top needed to be trimmed down just to make it a little bit more translucent uh possibly going a little lighter on the tint when i initially mixed it was another issue i also didn't like how it, it, it was just a little bit too wide at the top and I you know afterwards when I showed her a picture of this she says oh yeah that's that's better but you know it's funny uh, I just I didn't see it when when I was initially working on it and it wasn't until that evening I'm like yeah there's something needs to change here in order to make this kind of the piece that I envisioned in my head anyway That is the Phoenix. That and the number three Hercules are my two main tools that I like to use from Hunter Tools. I do have lots of other ones and I do on occasion use them, but the uh, the Phoenix and the number three Hercules are absolutely my go-tos. Uh, so again, light cuts here. Oh man, it would be would not be good if this come off the, the lathe at this point. I keep putting a little divot in there hoping that um, it's going to be there and, and help guide the drill bit when we drill this out. So again, back with a three and a half inch dipple disc, started at, well on the top, I started at 60 and kind of hit the reset button. And I've decided to go with um, a Waterlux coat. So it was sanded to 800. That is the Triple E buffing compound from the Beal buffing system. And uh, once we get this buffed out, we'll be able to hit it with some denatured alcohol and get it ready for our first coat of finish. All right, this is the first coat of Waterlux Gloss. And of course, talking about finishes and epoxies and if they're compatible, we, we know that the Waterlux is compatible with designer epoxy you can't speak for other epoxies but this is also in that category where this may not have worked but you know we found out way back in the day that it does and i'm glad it did because it's a great finish that's much better that's exactly what i'm going for i really wish that we had more areas like this so you'd see it better from the side but i'm happy with that and uh you know that one coat of waterlux may do it as the wind blows outside, I don't know if the camera's picking that up or not. That burl is just, oh, crazy. The figure is absolutely crazy. All right, I don't know if it's going to need another coat or not. But if it does, I'm just going to buff it like I did. Clean it with the denatured alcohol and put another coat on. And we'll see you when we're drilling the hole and finishing the bottom. Let me know in the comments what you think. Alright, so this 
I don't know, it just didn't seem right to do this, but we had to. <laughs> there was there was no way around this. Uh, it was such a uh, nice finished surface, and here I am going to drill a hole through it. But, you know, <laughs> all I did was I, I took my, um, my calipers and measured the threaded rod that goes inside of this, and then, of course, used the, the right size drill bit, and there you go. I could have tapped this and tried to screw this in, but I figured that it was probably best to not do that. That is, as you can see, a very long brad point bit. And um, now I got the, I got a set of, I don't know, maybe six or eight of these from Prince's Auto the, the, that are this length. And um, they're not the best of quality. I've actually untwisted two smaller ones. So here I'm going really slow to make sure that that doesn't happen. So uh, in the end, we get it. And that's the important thing. But uh and this here is another terrifying thing. <laughs> I first started drilling and like the uh, the drill bit was, it wasn't really doing all that great. And like, man, hope I hit that center hole. Well, we hit it. That's the main thing. Now, some may question why I didn't maybe use my vacuum chuck to do the bottom on this piece. And uh, it, it's pretty hefty and it's a lot of unsupported weight. So I figured that it was safer to pinch this between centers. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just making a drive to uh, go down through the very top of the piece here. And then we'll be able to bring up the tailstock and support it on the other end. So I'm just rubbing it on there and it'll leave a little rub mark. And then you're able to turn it down until you get uh, essentially the size you're looking for. And then a couple pieces of router matting to protect the very top of this. And then we'll be able to bring up the tailstock and uh, whittle this away. Again, with the 5 8 bowl gouge. And um, I'll use my right angled air powered sander to do the bottom on this. The, um, the bottom is concave. So, you know, it, it does sit nice and flat on, on a hard surface. So that's one major consideration. And uh, anyway, once that's done, we'll be able to try and figure out exactly how we're going to drill a hole in the bottom of this. I need a little area for the cord to come in and not be kind of bound up. So it's important to have a little relief hole. But of course, now the center has gone out of this. So if you try and use a Forstner bit, then there's nothing for the center point to grab a hold of. And it's very hard to, <laughs> to do anything with it. So that was my solution. Just drive a dowel down into it and then... Now the center of the bit is supported and you can drill it out. And there you go. We're ready for the cord. All right, so it's kind of a dark gray day here. So what I want to use is my two UV lights and I want to charge up this glow in the dark uh, resin. And then when that's done, we'll get a look at it in the dark and see how well it glows. So I had the uh, light on there for, I don't think, any longer than a minute. Check that out. How cool is that? Oh, she's going at the bottom too. Where's our side cave? There it is there. Very cool. Wow. absolutely awesome all right let's finish putting this together all right so in, to install this we're going to use some five minute epoxy from designer epoxy this is not available yet hopefully it will be soon anyway i've been uh trying a bit of it so I'll mix a little bit of this up and um get that piece of threaded rod installed that's probably way too much So uh, this is the little nut that's going to go kind of right down on the very top and sit like that. So that's good. So I'm just going to put this 5 minute epoxy on the outside of the threads here. And I'm just, I'm not going to go below it because I definitely don't want to clog this up. I 
don't want it to overflow either <laughs> and have a whole bunch on the very top. I think that's probably good. There we go. Surprisingly enough, I thought that this would be, I thought that we would see it a lot more through the side, but it's not too bad. Anyway, when that's done, we'll be able to put the, uh, all the electrical stuff in. So if you've made it this far in the video, I'd like to personally thank you for that. As you watch me assemble the, uh, the electrical parts of this lamp, uh, to be honest with you, it's quite simple. There's not really a whole lot to it. Follow the instructions that come with it. I did get this lamp kit off of Amazon. Amazon has probably thousands of these on there. So it's just going to depend on what style you like. One important thing here is tying an underwriter's knot. That's what I'm doing here. And that is to prevent the pieces or the, the cord from being ripped away from the socket itself. If something happens to trip on the cord. So once I finally get this all assembled, uh, we'll be able to throw a light bulb in this and for the first time we'll, uh, we'll see, well we'll see if I wired it correctly. <laughs> That's the important thing. Is it going to work? <laughs> uh, it must be one of those special lamps. You use the different bulbs. She's definitely working. Awesome. Well, it's a little different outro than I'm used to doing. Uh, so anyway, let me know in the comments what you think about uh, this week's video. And if you do, you'll be ent automatically entered into uh, a giveaway at 130,000 subscribers when we get there. And don't forget to put Desire Epoxy in the comments down below if you want to be entered into the three gallon kit at 130,000 subscribers when we get there as well. Of course, that's only for Canada and continental USA only. Uh, size on this piece. Seven inches from the top to the bottom thereabouts, and at its widest point, six inches or so. Uh, beautiful burl. I mean, it's just absolutely, you just don't see box elder burl that's this nice, that's for sure. And I'll throw some slow ro rotating footage up at the end like I usually do. And uh, along with that, I'll also charge the top of this with some UV lights, another gray day here again today. And uh, we'll get a good look at that as well. So, uh, yeah, fun to do, different, something different. Uh, I didn't find it overly challenging. Uh, just the way things are mounted and the way that you would do the bottom would be different than normal. Could have used my vacuum chuck, but I don't know. Would have been would have been really iffy. But anyway, next week we are going to do the lampshade. And uh, I'm not saying that I've been procrastinating on it, but I've got a design in my head that I want to do. And I just, it's going to be interesting getting there. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Yeah. So anyway, come on back for that next week. Uh, hopefully I'll make a cool lampshade to go with our cool lamp base. And uh, there'll be one all together. I should mention that this piece is sold. This is actually a commission and it's uh, it's going to the owner that bought the ocean coral bowl. So it'll be a matching piece to go with, with his bowl. So unfortunately it's not for sale and uh, it's something that I've been meaning to do for a long time and the person that's waiting for it has waited a long time too. <laughs> so. Uh, hopefully uh, in another week or so we'll be able to get this mailed out as long as everything goes good. All right, well, that's it. Take care. Stay safe. Don't forget the bell. Please share my videos with your friends. That is the largest way for me to build my presence here on YouTube. And um, I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll have to see how it goes next week, but uh, should be an interesting video next week and get them together. Should be a really cool looking thing. Anyway, let me know in the comments down below and don't forget my sponsors down there as well. Have a great weekend. See you next week.